The next artist needs no introduction. It's just Mrs. Handley's boy again, and we'll leave it at that. being so thirsty, but as a matter of fact, I've been taking a walk. And if anybody else wants to take it, they can have it. I've finished with it. And it's almost finished me, too. It was one of those walks you see advertised in the newspapers, complete with a map and all the wrong directions. You know the sort of thing I mean. An afternoon in Beachy Bucks, or gallivanting in Gravesend. Well, the one I've just taken was called A Pleasant Stroll in the Bunyan Country. Now, according to Public Enemy Number One, that's the fellow who writes about these walks. Hedgehog, I think he calls himself. You take the first train from Chatsby Junction and come home by bus. I shall go home by ambulance. I followed his instructions as best I could, taking the uh, left-hand turning past Peabody Buildings and passing the dog and dinner, the jolly brewer and the three blind mice, because it was before opening time. I turned down by the gasworks. Now, uh, something went wrong here because I walked three times around the gasometer before I discovered that it wasn't a gasometer at all. It was Davy Burnaby and Teddy Brown having a chest-to-chest -chest talk. Well, passing the glue factory and grasping my nose with the thumb and forefinger of the left hand, with the fingers extended fanwise in the direction of the local sewage farm, I stepped breezily past Smelby Soapworks until I reached the corporation rubbish stamp, on which was a notice, no parking here. Pausing a moment to regain consciousness, I tramped on past the goat and compasses, because apparently the goat was still in residence. And taking the right-hand fork, as in cabman's shelter, I eventually reached the fried fish and face egg. Now passing this prehistoric pub with great reluctance and a tremendous thirst, I rested a while in a disused slate quarry, which was full of old gramophone records and is known locally as Christopher Stonehenge. <laughs> I rather like that. Well, transferring my right sock to my left foot, I struck out across a field and came, much to my surprise and embarrassment, right into the middle of a nudist camp where they were playing blind man's buff. Well, I saw quite a lot of things, but the visibility was not too good, so I can only give you the bare facts. Leaving the camp, I came to a copse. In fact, two copse. They eyed me with suspicion, and I asked them if they could direct me to the cow and cucumber. I had to repeat it several times, because uh, cucumber is always like that with me. <clears throat> I also asked them if they'd like a drink, but they said they couldn't come because they weren't on pint duty. <laughs> I rather like that, pint duty. So I ambled on until I came to Hand Me Down Hall, the country seat of a well-known tailor. By this time, I was panting a little bit myself, and arriving at the crossroads, which the local yokel was sprinkling with broken glass at the request of the nearest garage, I eventually arrived at this beautiful and piscatorial pub, the Dew Drop Inn. Now, before I do drop in for a nice uh, barley water, I just want to give you a little word of advice. Never visit the Bunyan country until you are certain you know your own Bunyans. Bye, folks. <laughs>